Hi all, my name is Karen Miga. I'm an assistant professor at UC Santa Cruz, and I'm also the project director of the Human Pan-Genome Reference Consortium and the co-lead of the Telomere to Telomere Consortium. And as Beth just introduced, I'm, I'm happy to give you an overview of the pan-genome reference before we get started. As we all know, um, for the past two decades, we've celebrated work from the initial Human Genome Project. This was an international collaborative research program where the goal was to completely map and understand all of the genes of human beings. However, this is more than just a sequence. Um, essentially, the Human Genome Project released a reference genome, which serves as a resource for developing a number of workflows that have driven um, research internationally, helping us to make real um, new discoveries in terms of basic science, clinical science, and even understanding differences between humans across the world and population genetics. And by doing this, it's enabled sharing genomic data and data standard analysis um, really internationally around the world. However, I'm sure everyone in the audience um, understands that there's still a problem with this singular reference genome. And this is a general problem in genetic and genomics in that our, our reference genome only represents a haplotype from a single individual, and it doesn't adequately represent the global genetic diversity. And this is a general problem that we find across human genetics and genomics here. I'm just showing you a figure from Martin et al. in 2019, where we're looking at GWAS studies where we can note the global population frequencies, as you can see in the bar chart um, on your right. However, most of the data sets that we have or most of the submissions that are being made are largely from Western Europeans. Therefore, there was a call to action, and this was the launch of something called the Human Pan Genome Reference Consortium. And the goal is to provide a better representation of sequence diversity in the human population. And doing this, we're trying to target at least 350 diverse humans. And when you think about phased haplotypes, we're thinking of along the lines of 700 phased haplotypes. A lot of this really builds on this idea that we're gonna use automated workflows to release a large number of high quality assemblies. We'll be discussing that at length today, as well as creating a new reference data structure that will nucleate and foster a new ecosystem of pan-genome tools. I wanna emphasize that our initial efforts at generating sequences really benefited from available data sets and cell lines from the Thousand Genomes Consortium-based effort. Here, what I'm trying to demonstrate is that we have a proportion of different superpopulations that are already integrated into our production efforts at the HPRC. Our goal was to cover genetic and geographic diversity, really emphasize the availability of low passage cell lines. This is to avoid any issues that might occur through um, extensive passage and cell lines um, that could introduce variants that are not seen in the human population. And also in the beginning of our work, we um, really emphasize the availability of trios or parental data for technical reasons that enable us for phasing, which I'll go over briefly. Ultimately, our consortium realizes that the thousand genomes data alone is insufficient to fully represent the genomic diversity within the human population. So we're continuing now with partners, both domestic and internationally, to continue this representation and sampling. For today's workshop, I really wanted to emphasize that we've established several data flows um, as part of our consortium-based effort. At the top, um, we have kind of a level one, which is generating the data modality. Here we have several different types of data that we're gonna be discussing and working with today. Dovetail or a high seer um, data sets, Illumina data sets or short reads that are used from parental data, ultra long or reads that extend past 100 kilobases um, from the Nanopore platform, and high fidelity reads or hi fi data from PacBio. And through it out, we're making release and ensuring that this data is accessible to the public and organizing workflows. We also have um, a focus on generating haplotype of phased assemblies utilizing these data types. We go through issues of release and also issue publicly um, available data and workflows. And then ultimately our third product of our consortium is the pan genome graph or the resource itself. And we're developing a number of workflows in addition to describing the methodology involved to make these graphs and releasing to the public. And our year one release, which we'll be focusing on today, this is really discussing the first 30 samples from our production efforts. As I shared before, we have a number of different data modalities from data platforms. I'm wanting to share at this slide kind of more specific information about the coverage and the length estimates you can see here 
on your screen for PacBio, we have 30 genomes which have high fire of at least 30x coverage and a median read uh, length when we're talking about the HiFi data or the consensus sequence of 17 to 20 kb. Now, as part of our consortium, all of our data, we try to make open and available as soon as it's gone through its rounds of QC. And we're housing this data on many um, different data sets here. I'm showing you it on AWS, um, as well as Anvil, which we'll talk about today. We issue our workflows through DocStore as well as GitHub. And of course, we make these accessible through um, public databases around the world. Our production effort actually has an emphasis on long reads. This is because we're trying to create references that match or exceed the quality of our current HG38 or human reference genome. And what we've seen over a very short amount of time is that we can reach this goal um, by using kind of a pairing of two long read data sets. That's the HiFi data, which I'm showing you here, which for those of you who are not familiar, um, takes advantage of a multiple pass of a template, which I'm showing you is this type of circular molecule where you're issuing a subread over and over again. And although that single subread might contain error, when you take a consensus across the subreads, you have an extraordinarily high circular consensus read. Um, these typically are matched with a Sanger read, except on the order of 18 to 20 kilobases in length. We're also utilizing high coverage ultra long data from the Nanopore platform where we've been working with our partners at Circulomics in order to reach a production model where we can get at least 30x coverage of ultralong. Um, the ones that we'll be discussing today is at 10x minimally ultralong um, over the genomes we're working with. Of course, we're not only using a multi-platform approach, we're using a multi-center approach to accomplish these goals um, because we have a real technological challenge of reaching production of these complete references. And here I really want to credit our production teams. Um, we are based across the U.S., as I'm trying to illustrate here with teammates in, in Washington, St. Louis, and Rockefeller University and UW generating the HiFi data sets. At UC Santa Cruz, we're responsible for the ONT production as well as the OmniC or the High C production work. And we have company-based partners um, for all of the data types that we're using, including Illumina, that have been incredibly helpful for us to read our, reach our goal, as well as StrandSeq, which is happening um, with our collaborators in Heidelberg. Ultimately, once we've gathered all of these data sets, our first task was to try to identify the best um, method to reach high quality automated workflows for contig level deployed assemblies. Um, to do this, we held a bake off in our first year where we received 23 submissions from various assembly teams from around the world. And we compared them using 40 metrics of QC to try to evaluate which one of these automated methods produced the best contigs. High quality long reads, as you can imagine, with trios did the best, and high fiism, which was um, previously published, we're showing the um, citation here at the bottom of the slide for your record, um, made the best overall performance. We have a bake off paper that will be really soon from our consortium, so stay tuned to provide all of the details. But for this workshop, we really just wanted to give you an overview that we will be working with the high fiism assemblies based on this internal evaluation period. And we're currently developing methods for automated QC, scaffolding, and reaching a more finished product um, that's T to T for non-trio assemblies as well. So we'll go in great depth into the details of this slide today, but I wanted to at least once again, give that thousand foot view of what we're trying to do in terms of the workflows using Anvil and DocStore. Apparently on our GitHub, we have um, Whittle workflows and Doc. Docker files that people can access. On DocStore, we maintain our assembly workflows and our QC workflows. On Terra, we have all of our sequencing data and data tables where you can run your workflow runner, um, generate assemblies with um, data tables. We go through Jupyter Notebooks to check and aggregate this information. And similarly, we have QC workflows that will be discussed today where we can then study these assemblies and flag um, issues for QC and improvement. And we also have ways to check and aggregate this information as well. And this is all housed on Terra. I wanna use this slide just to really emphasize the quality of the deployed contact assemblies that we're working with in year one. Um, the assembly N50, when we talk about megabases, we're looking at extremely high N50s in the range of 18 to 59 megabases. And we have really high consistent um, quality values of the assemblies in the range of 50 to 56. And we see this consistent across all the subpopulations, as well as across the different maternal and paternal haplotypes. 
Of course, our last goal is to take the data, which starts off as these different data modalities and what we call level one data that I introduced earlier. We work through the assembly methods in QC to reach these extremely high quality diploid assemblies. But of course, the ultimate goal is to take these assemblies and identify methodologies to organize them into a pan genome graph. Here, I'm just trying to show a cartoon of that to provide some conceptual ideas of what we're doing. Um, as you can imagine, you have different individuals as shown on your left. They each have a high quality diploid assembly representing their maternal and paternal haplotypes. You can take this information and through um, understanding the alignments to one another and their similarity and differences, similarities shown in gray here, differences highlighted in bold and dark black. Um, you can then illustrate this using a pan genome graph where those gray parts in the cartoon, which are shared are now illustrated as a single node and differences that were in bold, you can see are now split between two different nodes, illustrating there's a SNP here, or a single nucleotide variant um, that marks an A versus G. And then it comes back together in the gray section where we have once again, um, similarities or, or alignment where all of the alignments are shared in that particular region. So for our pan genome effort, we had three main approaches that we're working on internally that we're going to be sharing with you today. Um, the first is building off of a methodology called Minigraph, which was established by Hengli's team. Here we have a generalization of Minimap2. There's an iterative construction step, and we're really flagging structural variants only. We've merged this technology, Minigraph, with Cactus, which was developed by Benedict Patton's team here at UC Santa Cruz. And with this step, we're now adding or building on the Minigraph structure by adding base level alignments to the mini graph. However, because of the complication of highly repetitive regions, we're currently omitting centromeric variation. We also have a graph structure called PGGB. This one is constructed with an all to all pairwise mapping. Um, this does not exclude centromeric variation, so it's enabled to really include the more repetitive context as well. The pan genome team currently has a freeze one in terms of the pan genomes. The best pan genomes we can create now are with the current data and tools, and we have 90 haplotypes that were included. Um, this also includes reference genomes such as HG38 and CHM13. We've been looking at these particular data structures and resources now across many different um, data mapping strategies, which we'll talk about today, which is the short read mapping. Um, Minigraph remains untested, but we have um, information that would suggest that we have fast um, mapping that can happen now using tools like Giraffe on Minigraph and Cactus. And we've untested the, we have not yet tested the PGGB. We have long read mapping data now for both Minigraph, Minigraph Cactus, as well as PGGB and assembly mapping um, both direct to the Minigraph and PGGB. So with that, I would like to take a slide to just acknowledge our entire HPRC consortium. There's a, a large number of, of team members who have contributed to all the three different stages of the presentation at the level one, the data generation, going through our assembly team and QC development, as well as the pangenomic project itself. And with that, I thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to take any questions and I'll pass it off to the next speaker.